the time... <clears throat> The time I embarrassed a feminist documentarian at her own screening. Hey everybody, it's Prince of Queens, and this is going to be another story time video. So if you liked my video about the feminist theater camp that I went to, this might be kind of enjoyable as well. Now, disclaimer, I didn't actually really do anything all that cool here. It wasn't some amazingly hard-fought feat that accomplished me much of anything as an individual, but it was just this kind of funny little thing that happened, so I figured I might as well tell the story. Because if you had watched the feminist theater camp video that I made, you'll realize that there's a lot of women who work in theater, film, things like that. You know, just media positions, blogging. They get positions that they don't necessarily deserve, basically just due to all of the plethora of grants and opportunities that are given to women exclusively. And then they end up not being particularly good at what they are doing. And the thing is, San Francisco, which is where we were, it's not a very good town artistically. There's a lot of art, and sometimes you find amazing stuff, but the signal-to-noise ratio is really, really huge, and mediocrity really, really thrives there, I think because of the influence of Burning Man culture, where, according to Burning Man, everybody's an artist, and it's all about just having the opportunity to express yourself, and everybody should, and nobody should be mean, and everybody should pretend that they like everything, except it's mostly bad, and so it's actually kind of unfortunate for people who have actually trained in disciplines to the point where they're actually good at things, because those people often get overlooked or treated poorly because people are essentially jealous of the fact that they're actually good at things. People really resent that. There's a lot of privilege hating in San Francisco. And if anybody's actually particularly talented and they're not a black lesbian in a wheelchair, everybody hates them because they're thinking, oh, you went to four-year university for script writing? Well, that's privilege. I bet you're not a very talented artist, so I'm not going to read your script or give you any opportunities. I'm going to give it to the black lesbian in a wheelchair because you're a white male. And you're able-bodied. That's sort of what things are like. So the deal was my friends and I were going to go to this feminist documentary screening. Now, I am saying feminists. I don't know explicitly that it was a feminist thing. But it was this woman and there was a whole screening. And this is San Francisco. And it really seemed like she probably was. Like, the likelihood that you'd ask this woman, are you a feminist? And she would say, no, is extremely th slim. It's slim to none. And my friends who were with me were studying documentary film themselves at actually Berkeley. And they wanted to see this. They knew about things that were like this. And so we went to it, and the film was about divorce. It was about this female who had been divorced and she decided to go interview a whole bunch of people about their story with divorce. And it's hard to remember if it was completely terrible or not. I don't remember anything about it, if that says anything. But that could have just been me at the time because, honestly, there was a lot of things that I forgot I might have been high, you know, like, but I was with it enough to definitely be able to absorb what was going on and what was interesting about it and what wasn't interesting about it. And there wasn't a lot that was particularly interesting. There was maybe a few things, but ultimately there was a big room full of people, probably like 200 people there. And this woman showed her film and everybody just kind of sat there watching it. Nobody was making any sort of enthusiastic reactions. And so when it was over, it was specifically designed to be a question and answer type, not just question and answer, but feedback, critical feedback screening to help her grow with her film. And the deal was she had been through a divorce and she wanted feedback about her film. And the funny thing that was about the film was that there was no mention of her divorce. 
no mention of her husband, no mention of why they got the divorce. They didn't show a picture of him, which I can understand why you wouldn't want to show a picture of him or put too many personal details. But if you're going to be repeatedly referring to your own divorce and how it made you feel, you should probably give some context. So I had a lot of experience with critiquing. It's something that I got very used to and I like to think pretty good at by the end of college because my high school was set up so that we basically just sat around talking and giving people feedback on their writing and that type of thing because it was an alternative school. We had couches instead of desks and that was just the environment. And then my college was a private school that had 15 students or less seminar style classes. And it was basically every class was a writing class. Like I had to write more in non-writing classes than most people do in writing classes at big four-year universities. You know, you take a writing class and you'll seriously have to write maybe five essays. Well, I had a history of theater class where she made us write at least three pages every week. You know, one of the assignments I kind of ran with a little bit and I wrote eight pages and then we probably had to write a 12 page term paper at the end of it. You know, my, my writing critiquing skills are very well refined. That's something that I do consider myself particularly skilled in. And since I was studying playwriting in the theater department, that meant that I also got used to critiquing pieces of work, you know, pieces of theater, documentaries that we would watch and that type of a thing. So I'm not afraid to say what I think at the time when, when something's over and I've watched it and I'm just thinking, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm just going to say exactly what comes to mind. And so when it was over, <laughs> I raised my hand and I said, hi, I just want to let you know that what I thought about the film, I found it relatively engaging, but you kept referring to your divorce personally, and yet you never gave a face to your husband, you never said any details about him, you never said anything about the circumstances of the divorce. And so it was actually kind of felt like we were supposed to understand something that we didn't actually understand, which made it hard for me to have much of a point of reference from what was actually motivating you to make the documentary because it felt like there was probably a lot there that you wanted to say and yet you weren't saying for some reason and her response was a very short and dismissive yes well it wasn't about him and it was so funny because my friends turned to me and they were like that was a really good critique and i i think that maybe they were thinking what I had said to a certain degree, but I was able to um, crystallize the problem fairly well. And that was really all I did. So it sounds kind of self-aggrandizing to say that I embarrassed this woman. And I, I didn't really so much do that, but what was interesting that happened over the course of the next half hour until we left and the critiquing session was still going on, after maybe the first five minutes when there were a few other critiques, other people started kind of um, liking, echoing, clapping at the kind of thing that I had said. And they were like, yeah, I want to sort of continue with what that guy said, because it is kind of true. It really did feel like you had a lot to say about your husband because you kept sort of referring to your divorce, but you never really said a whole bunch about him or almost anything at all. And we have no idea who this guy is. And, you know, I might have even said it seems a little bit unfair to your husband that you would talk about him in a certain capacity, but then never actually humanize him and give him a voice in the story at all. We don't know what his problems were with you. You only kind of know little glimpses and pieces of the kind of things that made you mad in the marriage. And people just ran with that and kept going with that specific critique. And we left because it just got really repetitive after a while. But it was really quite funny because it got to the point where there was this one guy and he was like, you know, I know 
it hurts. I can understand. Like, I can understand the pain it would be to talk about your divorce, but you really just got to do it. If you're going to make this documentary, you got to get personal or we're not going to care about your story because you keep bringing it up, but we don't actually, we feel like we're being let down, like we're being blue balled. I don't know if he said blue balled, but you know, is that kind of a thing? So I felt like it was really great because I wasn't thinking of it this way at the time. I was just thinking of it as a general humanist, kind of like, yeah, hey, don't say bad things about somebody without even actually properly attempting to give a soul to them, to give a proper representation of anything about who they were as a person. It's kind of seems a little bit cheap, unfair a little bit self-important, a little bit entitled, a little bit narcissistic to think that your story of your divorce can be told without speaking about your husband at all, you know? And now that I'm an MRA, it's kind of like, yeah, what a awful woman. Why would she do that? Like, can you imagine being the guy and finding out that she made a movie about divorce where she's slipping in little insults? Like, when something that somebody else says reminds her of her divorce, she'll be like, that interesting lady, you know, Claudia, she had a very similar story to me because with my divorce, my husband commonly said that he was going to do things and then he never did them. And so when we got divorced, it was almost kind of a relief to know that I would never have to wonder if something was going to happen again because, you know, blah, 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 or something like that, you know? Um, and so the point is, obviously, that... It's not a good way to make a film. It's not cool. And afterwards, the guy who was hosting it, he was this older guy, he came up and specifically asked me if I was a filmmaker because apparently he wanted to know. And I told him no. I was like, no, I, I, I do work in theater and performance art, but I'm not making films at this time. Maybe someday. Maybe someday I'd like to. And kind of sucks that I wasn't because, you know, maybe he could have given me an opportunity. Maybe he would have hosted me screen in a film of mine if I was, but I wasn't. But ultimately, I think it was just kind of a cool thing to do because you really should have seen the way the room just kind of eventually tore her a new asshole because she was doing such an irresponsible storytelling device in that instance. And I didn't make it about why would you do this to a man? I didn't bring up anything about gender. And so it became more of a just why would you do that to any person? You know, maybe your little feminist filmmaker friends backed you up and said, oh, no, he doesn't have a voice. He doesn't have a soul. He's a man. You don't need to say any. You don't need to accurately represent him. You are accurately representing him. He abused you emotionally. And you know, like maybe that's what they told her. And so she figured, OK, cool. I just don't have to say anything about my husband. I don't have to say anything about who he really was. I just get to say whatever annoyed me about him. And that's it. But apparently nobody agreed with her and I was the person who, bam, put it right on the table so that nobody was afraid to say it from that point onward. And they certainly went from there. So that's really all. I don't know if that's an amazing story, but I need to be making more content these days. So I hope you enjoyed it.